Hi everyone. This week in level E, we will be working on lessons 117 through 120. You will need worksheets 89 through 92, the geo boards and rubber bands, the geometry reflector, two sets of tangrams, the drawing board, T-square, and the two triangles, the 3060 and the 45. The math card games book, the corner stack, multiplication, and basic number card stacks. In lesson 117, we will work with shapes in an octagon and talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. It has been a few lessons since we last worked on angles and shapes, so the oral warm-ups will review that. Let's take a look at inscribing squares in octagons. Okay, so here I already have um, an octagon placed onto the circular side of the geo board. And remember that because, especially if you have one of our newer geo boards, the pegs are pretty short. So you wanna minimize how many rubber bands you need to use. So I used one rubber band to make the entire octagon. And now the instructions say, first to rotate the shape so that you can see that it uh, replicates a stop sign. The next thing they want you to do is to create an inscribed square on the geo board and within the octagon here. And so that is an inscribed square. And another way to do that is instead of starting at these corner points here, we can start at the top and make a square. This one here, down to that one, over to here. So now you have two inscribed squares. If you happen to have two geo boards, it might be easier to see by doing one square on one geo board and one on the other, but it is possible to do it with just one geo board. So now the question is, are these squares congruent? And if your child isn't sure, go ahead and have them measure from here to here. How long is that line? Compare that to here. Is it the same? Yes, it is. So these two inscribed squares are congruent. So have your child complete worksheet 89 and then ask the in-conclusion questions and then have your child choose their favorite game to play. In lesson 118, we will identify lines of symmetry and draw them. The warmups are on worksheet 90. So remember the line of symmetry divides a shape in half so that each half is a reflection of the other half. If you have the geometry reflector, that will work well, but you could also use a hand mirror or one of the triangles as a reflector. Have your child work on the first six problems on worksheet 90 and then ask the discussion questions that are in the lesson book. Then your child can finish the rest of the worksheet. Ask the in-conclusion questions and play the corners game, which is A9 in the math card games book. In lesson 115, we will work with reflections. There are just two oral warm-up questions, and then we jump right into learning about reflections. When I first taught this lesson, I was really confused by the terms vertical reflection and horizontal reflection. The vertical reflection moves on the horizontal line, and the horizontal reflection moves on the vertical line. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so for this exercise, you're going to need four equally sized triangles. So you could use the small ones or the large ones, it doesn't matter, but you need four of them. Here we have one tangram, and I want to reflect that tangram vertically. That means it's going to reflect across this horizontal line here. So the reflection vertically of this triangle is this. And I guess you could see how it reflects vertically because you could flip this up, right? So that would be going in a vertical orientation. But it ref the vertical reflection reflects around the horizontal line. On the other hand, the horizontal reflection reflects across this vertical line. So it is moving, the triangle is moving horizontally across this vertical line. So that's a horizontal reflection. 
I'd like to show you what that reflection looks like in the mirror or reflector, because the next bit of exercises that you're going to do requires your student to either imagine what that reflection looks like or to create it with a mirror or the geometry reflector. So here I have the tangram piece, and here I'm showing the reflection in the mirror. So now in order to continue the exercise, I want to put a tangram in place of that reflection. So this has to look just like it would in the mirror, obviously not the color. And does it? Yes, it does. So you can go ahead through those examples and then have your child work on worksheet 91. Your student will be using drawing tools to draw the reflections. So here's the worksheet. And if it's in a quail bound book, I would rip it out and tape it onto the drawing board. And they can use their T-square and triangles to create the reflections of the tangram pieces. Now, some of your kids may want to use the actual tangram pieces themselves to replicate the reflections first so that they know what their drawing will look like in the end. So for example, the first um, problem has the triangle in this position and has lines like this. And so they have, your child has to draw the triangle reflected in these quadrants. So what would that look like? That would look like this, and then this, and then this. Of course, it doesn't matter what color pattern your child sets them down in. I just did this so that you could see the distinctions. For the next one, the first triangle is in this position. So the reflection of that will be this. Okay. So I hope that helps you to see how they could use the tangram pieces ahead of time to know what it is that they're going to be drawing. Okay, so once the worksheet is done, ask the in-conclusion questions and play Corners 3, which is game A38 in the Math Card Games book. In lesson 120, we will continue working on reflections. Ask the oral warm-up questions, which review symmetry, and then have your child work on problem number one on worksheet 92. These problems are very much like puzzles. If your child struggles with this, I would do the problem with your child side by side. So you draw a line, they draw a line. If you don't have duplicate tools, which most of you probably don't, I would draw a line on my paper and then have your student draw the same line on his or her paper. Let's look at one of those problems. Okay, so here's the first example on the worksheet. Um, the easiest angle to draw over here would be this diagonal angle to start with because we have the left and the bottom lines already in place. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, if I wasn't sure about the reflection and what it should look like, I could take a tamgram piece and just flip it over. And that's actually what I'm going to do with my triangle. So the way I drew this first line, and of course, these lines are drawn on the worksheet for your student, but they can line up their triangle the same way. This line was created by putting this 45 degree angle triangle right here. So I'm going to flip over my triangle, making sure my, my T-square is hugging the board and the triangle is touching the T-square perfectly. I can line up my triangle and see where the blue line over here touches this black line and then just draw the new diagonal. Now from there, I can create a vertical line and I can overshoot it. It's always a good idea because you can always erase. So you wanna go a little bit farther than you think you need to um, and then erase it. Because if you go too short, it's hard to line things up again. So I've just made my vertical line 
And now I'm going to make my horizontal line right there. Okay, and then just erase this part up here. Of course, with a whiteboard marker, it's a little sloppy. It's easier with pencil. Now I want to replicate this triangle over here. So I can start off the same way that I just did with the big one because I need a diagonal here. And this is what I used to make the one on the left. I'm going to flip over my triangle, line it up, draw my diagonal, and then I can draw my vertical line. and my horizontal line. So this, obviously, it's not perfect. You're not going to make it perfect either, probably better than I did, because I have a pretty um, wide marker. So that doesn't lend itself to precision very well. However, um, it's OK to make mistakes, and it's definitely OK to erase. So your child needs to know that. They need to know that. Part of math is making mistakes, erasing, and fixing those mistakes. So since this triangle is basically the same as this triangle here, I can just flip it this way to make my diagonal lining up, of course, over here. And going towards that center dotted line. Okay, then we can just continue this vertical line down. Remember, overshooting it is fine. You can always erase. And then the horizontal line. And again, for the little triangle, go ahead and make my diagonal line. And then my vertical line. And then my horizontal line. And then finally, for the last quadrant, once again, I line up the triangle with the solid line and the dotted line, draw my diagonal, then draw my vertical line and my horizontal line. And then once again, for the little triangle. And there you go. All right, so remind your child to be persistent in this puzzle solving um, problem here and not to give up. It's okay if there are mistakes and erasures. Once the worksheet is complete, ask the in-conclusion questions and then play find the two factors game, which is P29 in the math card games book. And once again, there is a blog or video about that on the Right Start website. So I will include the link for that. And that's all for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.